This is a production of PBS Charlotte. The following episode of Charlotte Cooks is brought to you by Central Piedmont Community College and viewers like you. Thank you. Coming up on this episode of Charlotte Cooks, we are featuring this lovely looking vegetable. Do you know what it is? Stay tuned and find out. Hi there and welcome to this edition of Charlotte Cooks. I'm so glad you're with us today. I'm Chef Pamela Roberts and in my kitchen today I've got Chef John Forts from the flip side. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here with us today. Thanks for having me. So John, tell us what are we going to make today? We are going to do a brown butter roasted sea scallop. Okay. Got a little celery root and parsnip puree. All right. A root vegetable hash with nice. a citrus butter and some okay. braised bacon. That sounds really delicious. So there's a lot of components to the dish. What are we going to start with? Uh, we're going to start with the celery root puree. Okay, so celery root. That's what this funky looking thing is. Why would we use celery root? Why is it called celery root? The celery that actually grows out of a celery root uh, is not very edible. Uh, right. It's very tough. So this is actually the, the root to the vegetable that grows underneath the ground. It, it's got a very white flesh in there, mm -hmm. uh, firm flesh, almost like potatoes. Um, okay. You know, if you were to cook it by itself, it'd be a little bit looser than what a mashed potato would be if you were doing uh, potatoes. So typically we actually uh, fold a potato into this to thicken it at the end. But the flavor of it is just like celery and it's just got this really creamy is and buttery flavor. Is it strong as celery or a little bit milder? It's a little milder, okay. um, you know, off the take from it, uh, after you cook it. And, and we're gonna blend it with some parsnips and mm -hmm. some other stuff to kind of take it down even a little bit further. But that okay. background uh, celery flavor is just phenomenal and it's nice and creamy once you get it done. All right, that sounds really interesting. So can you show us how we'd cut this? If we were to buy this, what would we do with it? You have a great one right here that has the roots attached to it. And, and mm -hmm. you'll see when I cut into this, the roots are, are kind of throughout, so you have to clean it pretty well over here. Okay. Do not try to break out a peeler and peel this. It's right. not gonna, it's it's, not gonna it happen. It doesn't work. And whenever you're cutting anything, we take the, the tops off, and that's where the top would be right there, okay. so we have a nice flat surface. Okay. Um, and I'll usually take a pretty decent chunk off the bottom as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and then once you get it to there, you know, you just basically, almost like you're doing a, a cantaloupe or a, a honeydew, um, mm -hmm. you know, and you're just gonna kind of follow it around just there. Take that and you can see, off. yeah, you can see that it's, it's nice and white underneath it. Um, and what we do is, is we're gonna combine this with another uh, white root vegetable, parsnips. Parsnips look like white carrots. They do, Don't they, they do. Parsnips much uh, stronger mm -hmm. uh, than a carrot will be. Uh, okay, a lot it's of times not sweet actually, at all like it's carrots. It's not sweet at all. So don't um, be fooled, right? Again, just like the celery root or a potato mm -hmm. mashes up really well if you're making a puree or So or from potatoes. this point right here, this is ready to go. We'd cut, slice, dice, yeah, Whatever. at this point, you know, we're going to make a puree, so it's it's not necessary to take a ton of time in, in cutting mm -hmm. this up. You want all your, your cuts of parsnip and celery root to be the same, so they oh, cook evenly. Uh, uh, it's just such a fantastic and versatile mm -hmm. uh, vegetable that we're actually going to use in two different ways today on this okay. dish. So one way we're making a puree out of this with our parsnips, right? and the other way we're making using this in our hash? Is we're that using right? it in the hash later. Okay, yep. all right. We're gonna take one of these parsnips, take, okay. and, and you know, with the parsnip, you can use the peeler, uh, and we would just peel that down. Because um, it is like a carrot in that way. It is, it is, and, and when you feel it, you know, it's a little bit firmer, mm -hmm. um, and it's just got such a unique, uh, just fantastic flavor to it. And so we would just, you know, cut the root off of that, uh, and, and cut that about the same size as the celery root. Okay. And then when we go to cook this, uh, we have some going here. We're actually going to cook it in a mixture of water and milk um, with a little right. bit of salt and white pepper in there. And the reason we use milk is the, the, uh, the milk actually helps to break down the root vegetable, but it also keeps our vegetables nice and white for this puree because we're going to want a very nice white puree to, to hit the plate for okay. this. Okay, so these are already cooking. Nice, and they smell good. I can smell the parsnip in there. And again, you know, I, I said earlier that the potato um, will help thicken the celery root. The parsnip mm -hmm. does as well. When you mash okay. up the parsnip, it's a little bit thicker than yes, the celery root. Yes, yes. Celery root actually has a lot of water content to yes. it. Yes, okay. And it'll absorb it when you're boiling it. Okay. So are we ready to puree this now? We are, okay. we are. So at this point, what we would do um, is we'd actually grab our blender here, okay. and we would take you know, our parsnips out of here. We're not gonna use this liquid because we have the water in there. So okay. we're actually gonna take uh, just the, the parsnip and the celery root out of here. And then we're gonna take some, some butter, uh, a little bit of cream, white pepper, 
uh, and blend that all up. So we're not necessarily using the cooking liquid? We're not going to use okay. the cooking liquid because the water's in there. Now, oh, okay. uh, you could also take this and, and reduce it straight in cream mm -hmm. uh, if you'd like to, and, and then you could actually use that liquid. Okay. Uh, I like this method a little bit better because I can control the consistency of, of the, the right. puree at the end right. of it a little bit better. Right. Okay. We're going to take a few cubes of butter. And I do not like pre-melting the butter and the okay. cream. A lot of chefs okay. do. Uh -huh. um, I think that I get a, a you know kind of a creamier finished product by not doing that. I usually put it in cold as well. Yeah, I just I think that's mm -hmm. you know nice. So we're gonna put a little bit of cream in there. So not a lot, just enough to just, give it something to blend with. So exactly. So okay. we don't want to put too much because we can't pull it out of there. So right. we want to add enough to get it started. And if we need to add a touch more cream to it, we will just to get the right consistency. Okay. And then we would season this with a little bit of salt. Um, okay. and get that going. All so right. we're going to go ahead there, and blend go that. Go ahead and go on over there. And here's okay. your lid and your tamper. Excellent. So whenever you're turning on anything hot in a powerful blender like this, you always want to make sure you pulse it on or start it on low so that right. you don't build up that heat. You don't want to have it come so on all at once. So we got this perfectly on low here. And we just want to get that nice and smooth and you can already see that that's kind of smoothed right out. Okay. And that'll smooth out when they're cooked just nice and soft and you, and you test the doneness just like you would a baked potato by putting a knife in there, a little point of a knife and it's nice and tender all the way through, it's ready to puree. You don't want any chunks in there. That's right and you can see that the puree is nice and smooth in oh, there. And it uh, smells delightful. You could do this a couple other ways if you didn't have a bite of prep. You could use mm -hmm. a, a food processor, um, you'd have to let it go a little bit further right. so that it smooths it out. You could also use a ricer. And, okay, and, yeah. and push it through a ricer. And could you use an immersion blender? You could use an immersion okay. blender. Sometimes with the immersion blender, it won't break it down as much. Right. And so you right. may have to push it through a sieve or, or right. something. To, to get kinda, it really fine. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And so next, we are going to be doing a citrus butter, right? Right. Whenever you're making uh, any type of sauce, use good ingredients. Right. You know, so, so we're using you know, a decent white wine here. Okay. And we're going to get a reduction going with that white wine. And very simple, you know, we're going to add about a cup of white wine to that. We have some bay leaves here. Okay. Um, we have a little bit of peppercorn. She have a little fresh thyme right behind you. If I could get a sprig of thyme from you, Pamela. We're going to throw a couple sprigs of thyme in there. And what we would do is, is we would reduce this by half. Okay. Um, after it's been reduced by half, we would then put in a little bit of heavy cream. Okay. And okay. we're going to reduce by half again. Okay. Um, and you're going to start to see some thicker bubbles form. And you don't mm -hmm. want to reduce it too much because your cream will actually break because of the fat that's right. in there. Right. So you want to get that kind of going, uh, reduce it down. And we have a little bit that's that's just about there already. There you go. Right there. So this is about where you want it to reduce to. Um, and you can see the thickness there oh, yeah. that we have. And, oh, and you yeah. have your peppercorn and your thyme in there. You want to have a, a simmer and mm -hmm. you really want to temper in your butter at that point. Mm -hmm. um, you should have ice cold butter mm -hmm. um, going into your hot cream so that they're balancing out. You don't want to have warm butter and you really don't want your cream to be boiling because right. your sauce is going to be more up to break at right. that point if, if you do. So you used a term called temper. Can you explain what a temper is for our viewers? Yeah, you want to get the temperatures kind of uh, almost up to the same temperature. So if you were going hot to cold, mm -hmm. uh, you might use a little bit of the hot mm -hmm. and a little bit of the cold at the same time to balance out the temperature. Right. Once this is done, what do we do with this now? How so do we know that it's done? When this comes up to a simmer, you're going to see the bubbles kind of popping mm -hmm. and, and they get really big. At that point, what you're going to do is you're going to take a little bit of orange and a little bit of lemon okay. and we're actually just going to squeeze a little bit of that fresh juice oh, right no. into there. Now I would be worried about the citrus curdling the milk. Are we not worried about that? Yeah, so you are and, and so that's why we're going to get the reduction going and, and get it down to this point where it's, it's just ready to add the butter and, and we have this a little thicker than we actually want it because your lemon juice and your orange right, juice is actually going to thin it out a little bit. Okay, good. So we're going to bring the, the, the butter into that, which is going to kind of bring your, your thickness back okay. up. I'm going to squeeze it in and I'll whisk. Yep, we're going to okay. squeeze a little fresh lemon in there. Fresh orange. And this is something that you could, you know, if you wanted to change this up and, you know, do pineapple juice or if you wanted to do oh, lime nice, juice, nice. Uh, you know, the citrus is needed for the acid in there. Right. You could also use vinegars to, to kind of finish this sauce. So we're just going to, we squeeze that in there, we're going to bring it back up to that simmer and then we're going to start mounting in our butter. Okay, so how much butter are we going to put in there? Uh, we're going to put about four tablespoons into okay. this. This is going to be a finishing sauce and, mm -hmm. and we're not using a ton of it on the fin final dish. Right. So you see all this cream and butter going into right. it. We're only putting about an ounce on the final okay. dish. So at this point we would take our butter and you don't want to put all your butter in at the same time. You want to 
add a couple cubes, whisk it in, add a mm -hmm. couple cubes, whisk it in. It's, you can take the pot off the stove so you're not coming up to too mm -hmm. hot of a temperature mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. kind of slowly do this. This is another thing that if after you strain this out, you could also do in, in a blender um, okay. if you wanted to. And, okay. and uh, add your butter it's a little in more, the blender yeah. or with an immersion blender. Or with an immersion yeah. blender. You know, make mm -hmm. your life a little bit easier. You don't mm -hmm. always have to be sitting on top of stuff mm -hmm. on the stove. But you can see as we kind of whisk in that butter, we're getting a nice little sauce consistency to that. And then at that point, what we would do is, is strain out the sauce. Right. Um, and the strained out sauce, you know, and once you add the butter, it gets a nice little yellow uh, kind of color to it from the butter, a little richer. Um, and you can see that's just going to oh, make a beautiful nice glaze for the scallops. Yeah, look at that. So we're going to make a hash now, aren't we? We are going to make a okay. hash. In our hash, what do we have? So we're going to utilize some root vegetables in the hash. Okay. We're going to be utilizing some of the celery root, okay. parsnip, uh, carrots, okay. and also a little bit of sweet potato. Well, we often go to the store and we see sweet potatoes and we see them and they all look sort of different and sometimes we even find sweet potatoes that look like this right is there any difference uh, not a huge difference sometimes the texture on the inside may change a little bit but the sweet mm -hmm. potato flavor is going to be there and the um, color is going to be and there. the color is going to be the there. color can change too right yeah everything most of these are going to be orange on the inside right 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 and this, because the outside of the skin is different, doesn't mean the inside is a little bit different. But sometimes you can find white flesh sweet potatoes. Sometimes you can even find them in a beautiful dark magenta color. They're called garnet sweet potatoes. You could use all those, right? You can use all of those. And, and there's actually some purple ones, too, that have a kind of more chalky texture on the yeah, inside the, of them, the, if you the, will. The texture isn't quite as nice as a sweet potato, right. but the color is fantastic. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. And so, so when you're looking for something for a plate, you're always thinking about that. You're thinking mm -hmm. about the colors on a plate. So mm -hmm. you might want some purple, but you also right. have to be careful because it bleeds a lot. Oh, uh, so you have yeah, to be careful with anything point. purple. Right. Yeah. So even the carrots, if you chose a purple carrot, it would bleed a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. We okay. actually have a, a purple carrot here. And what does it look know? like when you it. So if we just, uh, you know, if you peel it down, it's got that great <gasps> color to Look it. At that. But you can see right on my board right there some of the ink oh, from it. Oh yeah. Know, and if you touch it's it, you'll get a little get, purple, and, yeah. and so that will bleed everywhere. So you have to be very careful whenever using purple carrots. Um, or, or purple, any type of vegetable. So what I would do is I would cook that totally separate and fold that in at the end. Very Instead end. of if I, I did it like this, it would turn everything in there purple. Everything. Okay, so to make the hash, you've already got your sweet potatoes, parsnips, and carrots diced. Is that right? That's right. And celery root. That's right. So right. we've peeled all those. Okay. Um, we've then diced them nice and small, uniformly. You want them all to cook the same. Right. So, so it's really important to get everything the same size in this one. And if you have scraps to it, you know, you're going to make a puree. Right. You could always take the celery root and the parsnip scraps and mm -hmm. actually that goes into your puree if you're trying to make it right. really nice. Now you don't have right. to do the small dice but. Because the hash is going to be seen on the plate you really really want to pay attention to making really good knife skills and so try to make everything at least the same size and make it look the same. And all we've done to this is is we've boiled it for about six or seven minutes, okay. got it tender and then we've shocked it into ice water okay. um, to stop the cooking process and then we get it real dry through a strainer and then we usually lay it out on a towel to really dry it up because when you make your hash you want to get it somewhat crispy right? Um, and it's not going to get crispy if it's wet. Okay. What do we have to do to make the hash? Okay, so real simple. We're going to get a pan, pan going and you want it, you know, pretty, pretty warm when you throw your root vegetables in there to begin with. And a couple other things that are going to go into this hash is a little bit of tasso ham. Tell us about tasso ham. So tasso what ham, is tasso ham? So tasso ham is a Louisiana ham. It's a very heavily rubbed ham that has a little smoke flavor to it. Okay. Uh, a lot of onion powder, garlic powder, cumin, paprika, and salt. So whenever you're using this, you want to be careful about how much salt you're actually adding into the dish. And this is a bigger piece of oh, the see, tasso you, ham, how it would actually it, come before we yeah. actually diced it there. So we're going to be using tasso ham. We're also going to be using a little roasted pepper here. And just a quick trick to, to roast a pepper or to peel it would be to grab a, a red pepper and throw it right on a burner and that'll kind of get your skin nice and black and you mm -hmm. want to rotate that. Well, I'll watch that while you do the hash. Absolutely. Okay. So we got a little bit of oil in the pan. We're going to get that kind of preheated. And in there, we're going to add a little bit of that tasso ham. You want this to complement the dish. You don't want it to be too much tasso because it will really over season the dish okay. if, if you get too much okay. in there. You're going to get that and render out some of that fat and you'll see the, the oil start to change color a little bit because some of that crust, that, that spice that's mm -hmm. on there is mm -hmm. pulling off of that and that's going to add a really nice flavor to that. So we got that up to about where we want it. We're going to add our root vegetables. 
We're gonna just let that cook. You don't wanna add any wet ingredients at this point, okay. meaning your peppers or your greens, yeah, because right. that moisture is gonna take from your hash and you're not gonna be able to get it nice and crispy. So we have our peppers ready here. One of the final ingredients we're gonna do is, is a little bit of fresh thyme right at the very end of this dish. Mm -hmm. And you know, you can pick up fresh thyme at any grocery store and real easy to, uh, to pull the thyme leaves off. If you just hold it and go the reverse way of the leaves, it'll come right off. You know, you just give it a rough chop. This doesn't have to be fine. We want that thyme flavor really to be present I in this dish thyme. at the end. Rough chop that up. You don't want the stem. The stem will add a little bit of bitterness to it. Right. Um, so you don't want the stem. Some stems are great. Cilantro stems are fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, but things like rosemary and basil and thyme. It gets thyme, a little bit tough. Yeah, it gets yeah. tough and bitter yeah. for sure. You can see that's got a nice little uh, mm -hmm. saute going to it now. It's very aromatic. It um, is. And we're going to get that kind of crispy. And, and all we're going to do to finish this is we're going to throw our peppers in here once this gets crispy. Mm -hmm. A little bit of fresh thyme. Just a tablespoon of butter to kind of create a nice little glaze to it. Right. And then we'll finish it with some fresh local kale and arugula. Nice. Yeah. And look at our pepper here, guys. This is what you're looking for. You want it to get nice and black. See, I'm just sticking it right directly on the flame. I'm just letting it sit there. Am I worried about it? Nah. But that's how you'd roast a pepper. Just great flavor. It oh, really is just great flavor. flavor. And, and you know, you can buy them already done at the store, but you sure can. this is so easy, especially if you have a gas stove at home. Yeah. If you don't have a gas stove, well, put it out on your grill. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. You might get a little smoke flavor, yeah. too. So we got we got the hash just about uh, there. Uh, where it's, it's getting a little bit of color. Um, you don't want to cook it too long because you don't want the vegetable to turn to mush and, right. and you're still cooking the, the vegetable here. And they have been pre-cooked about halfway, right? About halfway, okay. about halfway. You want a little bit of a texture. Another cool thing with this dish that you can do is actually add cream at this point. Oh, yeah. And we call it a root vegetable risotto. Oh, um, there you go. And not with actual rice, but the starches from the, right. the root vegetable starts uh -huh. to come out. Uh -huh. We finish it with a little creme fraiche, rosemary, Parmesan nice. cheese, and it just comes out oh, a great dish. Oh, that sounds delightful. So we got it there. We're going to add a little bit of our pepper. Give that a quick toss. We're going to add a tablespoon of our butter just to kind of give it a little bit of glaze. Our fresh thyme. And we have a little bit of fresh kale and arugula back there that we're going to just fold in here last that. second. What I like to do with the kale and arugula is get this to where you want it, shut it off, and then add your kale and arugula. Okay. These are not braising greens. These are nice, delicate greens. Right, so they don't uh, take a long time to cook. They are coming to us from uh, Glory Farm and also Wild Hope Farm here locally. Oh, nice. Uh, so we have a couple farms that we brought in. And That's then very nice. we're just going to kind of give it a, a light toss. And you're just going to keep that nice, bright green color. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be our beautiful hash right there. Okay. You got the nice, bright red color, uh, the green from the greens and whatnot. You could use some braising greens in here, but you're not mm -hmm. going to cook them, so you'd have to braise them in advance. Right. But any type of green right. in here would work. Right. But use the nice, tender ones. Ah, here, look at this pepper. Ha ha. Yeah, it looks like it's, it, you should be alarmed about it, but that is what that's supposed to look like. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this now. We're going to put it into a bowl. We're going to cover it with a piece of cellophane and we're going to let that steam and when that cools off enough to handle, that skin's going to slip right off. Don't put it under water because you're washing off all the flavor. That's right. Wipe it with a towel and then wash your towels or paper towels, throw them away. Okay? But that's what you're going to do. It's all set, ready to go. Roasted red peppers, you can use those in so many ways. So Very many versatile. ways. Very versatile. That's a good trick to know, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It, it is. is. You go and you buy those things, they're expensive. Peppers are expensive anyway. Yeah. You know, but that's You'd a nice You'd be amazed. One. You'll get quite a bit of pepper out of one or two peppers. You really will. <laughs> and there's so much flavor in it, and it just goes such a long way. Okay, so our hash is ready. Our hash is ready. We're going to cook some scallops next, right? We're going to do some Yay, brown butter roasted scallops. scallops. You're going to glove up for scallops, aren't you? I'm going to glove up. I don't want to smell like scallops all day. I don't blame you. <laughs> I mean, you know, there's something about when you work with fish and when you work with sesame oil and things that are really strongly flavored that it just sticks with your hands all day long? It does, no matter how much you wash them. You know, it, it's, it's just it's one that. of those things. So we use gloves for a lot of reasons in the kitchen and one of them is to keep our hands from stinking. But another one is to make sure that we're not transferring things to the food that we're preparing. That's so. right, that's right. Scallops, where do we have for scallops? We have a, a, a U12 scallop. Okay, um, tell us what U12 means. So whenever you're dealing with scallops and even things like shrimp, uh, they're sold by the pound, and, right. and uh, there's how many pieces per pound. And, and okay. the bigger you get, the more expensive you get, typically. Right. Uh, so these are an average of 12 per pound, okay. um, essentially, is why they're a U12. Yeah. And 12. sometimes it's a range. Okay. Um, like with shrimp, a lot of times it'll mm -hmm. be 16, 20s, especially right. when you get uh, higher numbers. Right. Uh, when you're down at 6 counts or 10 counts, they're that right. number. But right. 
And so when you look at the scallop, sometimes there's a little tab on the side. There is, there is, and that's, that's a great point. So it's a little uh, muscle here, uh, and, and you're just gonna pull that off. That is not very tender. Um, okay. And now they do have uses. You can mm -hmm. actually, I've made sausages out of these. Oh, really? Almost like a, a binding agent for a seafood okay. sausage. They work very well for that. But you don't want to leave it on there because it's, it's going to be much, much, much more tough than your regular scallop when you're eating it. Okay, so when we're preparing the scallops, what do we have to do? So Just pull the tabs off? Pull the tabs off. We buy a very good scallop at the restaurant. Mm -hmm. um, and so they're dry packed, so they're, they're, they're not wet. You don't want to have anything wet going in right. your saute pan. It's not right. going to give you a good sear. So right. if, if they were to be a little bit wet, you could you know put a little towel around them and, and dry, dry them, them off a little bit before you sear them. And these are like one of the original fast foods. They don't take long to cook at they all, do, do they? do not take long. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, we like to serve them a mid rare medium kind of at the restaurant. So you can go well done. The more you cook them, uh, they'll turn into rubber bands sometimes. They will. Where they get they you know, will. very chewy. Um, they'll get very, very tough. And same with frozen sometimes if you right. get a frozen scallop. You but know, the frozen a, scallops have a lot of water in them too. You can't get do. that nice, crispy, golden brown on the top it. of them. You're, you're not. not. You mentioned dry pack. So if you're buying scallops and you're buying U10s or U12s or U6s, you want to make sure that they're dry pack because usually you're going to want to get a nice golden sear on it for this, for and this dish make so. sure that you're getting so you're paying a lot of money for them anyway at U10s and so you want to go ahead and make sure that they're nice and dry packed and that just means they're not packed with water yeah so at this okay. point we would get our pan going right. um, and you want to get your your pan pretty warm depending on how many scallops you're going to do okay. um, and I wouldn't try to do too many scallops in a pan you can always sear them real real good on one side mm -hmm. flip them and finish them a little bit later if you're doing okay. a lot of scallops you know we're going to do probably eight or so in this pan and you always want to use an oil that has a higher burning point right. to it. Uh, you know, we are going to finish this with some butter at the end to give them a nice little glaze to them. But at the beginning, I always start with a, a typically a blended oil, okay. uh, you know, maybe 20% olive oil, 80% uh, canola or something like that. Okay. Um, and we're going to get that up to temperature. And you, you're going to want to hear a sear when you put them in there. Yes. Uh, if you don't hear a sear, uh, they're going to stick a little bit to your pan. So we have our pan just about there. And so we're going to take these and we're going to actually Drop so how there. many um, scallops do you put in an order? So we do four. This dish is also going to have a little bit of tassel ham and bacon and some other okay. protein to it. So so four is kind of where we're at on that. And so scallops are really rich in flavor too. Very I, rich. I think that after four, I don't want any more because yeah. <laughs> they're just so rich. We're going to take uh, a little bit of kosher salt, certainly. A little bit of pepper okay. and season those. And just don't mess with them. Once you get them in that pan, just let them go. You, you know, know, a and, lot of people want to get in there and move them around and poke know, them and mess them. They're going to release from the pan once they get, you know, a nice sear to them. You're going to get a nice golden brown color. Get them nice and crusty on one side. Flip them over and let them just sit and rest and they're going to be done. Um, once we flip these, we'll throw a tab of butter in there. We'll just baste the scallop a little bit. Also throw a little bit of fresh thyme to kind of really okay. give it a little bit of flavor there. Mm -hmm. And they're going to take about two to three minutes on each side. Okay. Um, uh, three minutes on the first side and then let them rest for three minutes on the right. other side. And then they're going to be wonderful, soft and tender on the inside. Yeah, and you just want that great texture. You know, yeah. scallops these days are, are, are fantastic. So at this point, you know, you can start to see around the edges, we're getting a little bit of kind of a golden brown mm -hmm. color to them. And at that point, we're just going to let those kind of release from the pan, like I said. We have a nice golden brown Ooh, color to that. that. Uh, you know, maybe a touch longer we can go on there. And we'll just kind of flip those. And let them go for another 20 seconds or so. They smell fantastic. <laughs> it smells like the ocean, actually. I smell salty That's sea That's what you air. should be smelling. Yeah. So we have all those. It's kind of funny how when you cook different seafoods, you smell different things. But scallops have always, to me, smelled like the ocean when they cook. Yeah. So we have the, the scallops flipped over here. Um, and at this point, what we would do is we would throw a couple uh, pieces of thyme in there. Mm -hmm. And this is going to impart a little bit of flavor. We're going to take, well, a little knob of butter. We're going to take our heat down just a touch here. We're going to get that butter in there. I'm just going to tilt our pan here. And as that butter melts, we're going to baste the scallops. And you're going to get this nice buttery kind of crispy coat on these. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, all you're going to really do is just kind of, once you get a little bit of this brown butter going here, shut your pan off and just let your scallop rest so that they don't overcook. You want to serve yeah. this about mid rare to medium. So we have our celery root and parsnip puree. Okay. Uh, and we're going to take that. And we're just going to kind of put that and do a kind of push across the plate, a little smear of it, if you will. I love that. We have our hash that we did up. Beautiful and we're not going to put a ton there, but we're going to you know, start this hash on the plate. 
and yeah, colors. the black plate with the yeah, with the nice root nice. vegetables looks just fantastic. You're thinking about colors again. You know, we have Absolutely. all the, the colors in there. Absolutely. Make them look good. We're going to grab, you know, four scallops on here. I think is going to be plenty, uh, and we're just going to kind of set those on top. Oh, they're perfectly cooked. Look at that. They're just beautiful, beautiful they scallops. So we have our scallops. We do some braised bacon at the restaurant, so mm -hmm. we would just take a couple pieces do you make of your bacon. bacon at the restaurant? Uh, we do, we do. We we do a, a cure on it. We do a light smoke on it, just depending on on what we're using it for. We're gonna put a little lemon butter on here, the Here's citrus butter, butter that we made earlier. You don't need a ton, and so I'll just kind of drizzle a little bit on there, and I might just take a little bit, kind of put a little bit on the well, plate everything there. Everything just pops on that plate. It's nice. And then we have some beautiful microgreens that we get from Mindy at Tiga Hills. And uh, just great. Uh, just to add a little more color to the top of that dish. So, hey guys, look what we got here. From the flip side, we have got brown butter scallops, celery root puree with a root vegetable hash, and bacon and citrus butter. That looks like something I'm going to dive into and in just like 30 seconds, because that's fantastic. So let's talk about your restaurant for a second. Absolutely. So where are you located? Yeah, so we have two restaurants. We have okay. the Flipside Cafe in Fort Mill okay. and the Flipside Restaurant down in Rock Hill. Fantastic, and your wife Amy joins you, right? So this is Amy, who is John's wife. They actually met in the restaurant, we and did. I'm telling you, if you guys go, you gotta watch Amy cook, because she's so entertaining cooking, because I love watching you cook. I really do, I really do. And John, this looks fantastic. And thank you. Thank you for being on the show today. Absolutely. You can get the recipes for this absolutely fabulous dish on our website at pbscharlotte.org or send me an email at pamela.roberts at cpcc.edu and I'll be happy to send you a copy of the recipes. Thank you for watching this episode of Charlotte Cooks. And John and Amy, thank you for joining us. Thank, thank you for having us. All right, thank you. We'll catch you next time. of PBS Charlotte.